Hey guys, welcome back. So today we're going to be going over the MTH DCS Wi-Fi system. So the system that you add on to your DCS system to control your trains through the MTH uh, DCS app instead of using the handheld remote. So we're going to do a little uh, video on the setup of the um, Wi-Fi unit, how to use the app, go through all its functions and features, and then do a short comparison between this and the remote. And then I'm going to give you my just personal opinion on which one I like the best uh, when I'm running the MTH uh, trains that have DCS in them. And that's what we're going to do today. So uh, let's get right into it. All right, so let's start with the, D uh, the DCS uh, WIU interface unit first. Uh, so this is the unit. It's kind of compact and small. Just an add-on unit that gets connected to your TIU. Uh, this came in this version right here that you see, which is a separate sale just by itself, or sometimes it came packaged with the DCS system itself with a TIU instead of a remote. So it just depends, you know, what you have. But uh, when you get it, it's going to have uh, three things in the package. You're going to get the unit. You're going to get a power supply that plugs into the power port right here, and you're going to get a USB uh, cable. That plugs into the USB port here for the TIU connection. Now, if you have an older TIU that does not have a USB connection, so you don't have Revel your TIU, and you still have the serial port, then you, you need to buy one additional piece, which is a USB to serial port adapter uh, for in between there, so you can hook up your serial port to the Wi-Fi unit, because these only come with USB connections on the front here, and that's pretty much it. The third connection that's available on here is the Ethernet connection. So if you have a hardwired Ethernet connection, you can use that. So if either your router is close by or you have uh, you know Ethernet in the walls like I do in my house, you can plug it in directly to an Ethernet connection and instantly be connected on your network. So you have three ports on the front there. And then there's five lights on the top here. So there's a TIU light right here that will uh, basically glow solid um, purple when it's connected to your TIU. If it's blinking purple, that means that it can't find the TIU. And typically, if that's the case, uh, it's because the TIU is not on the software version 5.0 or above. So you must be on 5.0 or above for the TIU uh, software version. Otherwise, you cannot use the WIU. So in case that's uh, your situation, just make sure you're up to date on the latest uh, version for the TIU, which I think is right now 6.1, something like that. So uh, you may have to upgrade if that's the case. Uh, but once you're upgraded, it should connect, and then that light would be uh, solid purple. Um, the LAN connection is blue. And this is only lit and lit up blue if you're using a, an Ethernet cable and you're plugging it directly, hardwiring it into your network. If you're not using an Ethernet cable, then that light doesn't actually light up. Okay. Um, and then you have the uh, power right here. So this will be green when it's got power. So it'll be a solid green, obviously. So you know if it uh, basically has uh, power or not. And then you also have the Wi-Fi over here. So this is uh, when you're connected to Wi-Fi, um, then if the Wi-Fi is available, it'll be blue. And that will be lit up also as a blue. So these two are both blue, just depending which one you're using, your hardwired connection or your uh, Wi-Fi connection. And then on the back here, um, there are three things. You have the antenna, which you just screw in here onto the antenna port. You have your uh, WPS, so that's uh, Wi-Fi protected uh, secure mode, right? So if you're going to connect this to your home network, uh, then you have to have a secure connection. And if you have a mo modern router that has a WPS button on it, you just hit the button on your router, and then you hit the button here, and then the two should connect if everything goes smoothly. And then the other thing is you have a mode switch right here. So there's two modes. There's home mode and MTH mode. And depending how you're going to connect this to your network, or if you are going to connect it, is uh, the position that that switch will uh, be set in. So that's really the, the choice you have to make initially. Are you going to use just the MTH uh, Wi-Fi network with it, or are you going to actually try to connect it to your home network? So 
if you leave it on the MTH and you're not using an Ethernet connection, then what will happen is this will create its own MTH Wi-Fi network. So now you're going to have two Wi-Fi networks in your house, your normal one and then this additional one. And any time that you want to control your trains, you're going to have to go into your smartphone or your tablet's uh, Wi-Fi settings and select the MTH Wi-Fi network and connect to that network. Now, even though it creates a Wi-Fi network, it's not internet based, obviously. So you won't have any internet connection. You'll just have connection to this particular unit with the DCS uh, Wi-Fi app and that's it. So uh, if you're you know, running this in the basement and you have like dedicated, like maybe old outdated smartphones and tablets that you're just using in the basement and you're not using the one you usually carry around with you, then you could actually just use MTH mode here and then have them permanently set to that um, Wi-Fi network. And then anytime you go down to the train room, you just grab one of those devices and it'll you know be connected. If you're going to use your personal phone that you're using it throughout your house normally that's connected to your house Wi-Fi, your home Wi-Fi, right? Then you probably don't want to use that mode. So, and the disadvantage to it is obviously when you're in MTH only mode, you don't have any connection to the internet. So you can't browse the internet, you can't get all the normal stuff you do on your smartphone or tablet, right? If you're uh, connected just directly to the MTH network. If you set it to the home, then that lets you set this device up on your home's wireless network. And it will, um, that's what the WPS is for, right? So you can get that secure, secure connection between uh, this device and your home network. So it's like adding any other Wi Fi device to your home's network, just like you do today for anything you would do the same thing. You're just adding it to your home's network. And that way, when you're actually using your DCS app, um, it will be on the network, it'll work, and you'll have internet access just like you do uh, with anything else you have on your phone or tablet. So now, if you are going to use the ethernet connection right here, then that's a different story. You want to leave it on MTH mode for ethernet connections, for direct connections with an ethernet cable. So in my particular case, I do have ethernet throughout the house and I am actually connecting the one up here on the standard gauge layout and the one downstairs on the O gauge layout directly with ethernet. And because I'm doing that, there's no security that you have to go through with WPS or anything like that. You just plug it in, your router is going to assign it an IP address and you're set to go because you're on a secure network through an ethernet cable. And um, that is actually, I mean, if the best connection, if you do have it available is the ethernet connection. It's a solid connection. You never have to worry about Wi-Fi issues or it dropping it or anything like that. It's always gonna be connected, period, end of story. Um, but if you don't have that, then you can connect it through Wi-Fi if you don't have a close ethernet uh, connection that you can plug into. And that's pretty much it for the actual unit itself. Now on the bottom of it, it has the password for the Wi-Fi network, if you are using the MTH Wi-Fi, it's the same for all of them. It's just MTH DCS Wi-Fi. So that's the key uh, that connects it. And that's pretty much it. It has the MAC address on the bottom too, in case you want to see it in your router, which device it is and stuff like that. But otherwise, uh, that's pretty much it. So all you're going to do is plug it into your TIU, uh, get all your connections set up, and then you're ready to actually open up the app and uh, start uh, running your trains. All right, so we're going to start with the app here up on my standard gauge layout um, just because uh, I'm going to show you a couple features. Um, I will preface this by saying that I have both the handheld remote and the app. I've used both of them and my preference actually for MTH for their DCS system is actually the app. It's not the remote. And I know there's a lot of hardcore users that you know, say that the remote's better. It's actually not. And this is actually much easier to use in my opinion. And you can do a lot more things quicker and faster with it. And uh, you'll see why I'll point out all the different things, but I have the remote also. And you know, 
the remote physically has some issues with it um, that aren't as clean and don't function as smoothly as in the app itself, believe it or not. And if you haven't tried the app, then you should try it to really do a comparison because you might be surprised how easy it is to use. So let's start with it. It's the Wi-Fi DC app. <clears throat> It'll come up and you'll see this screen says run my trains and then there's a couple links down here for news search and catalog now again if you're not connected to your home network and you're just using the MTHU Wi-Fi network you wouldn't be able to get to any of these things down here because it can't connect to the internet but if you're if you're on your home network then everything works fine so you're just gonna click run my trains you'll get to the main screen here that allows you to select your engines add an engine uh, and do different things with it now, before we do that, let me go over to the app itself. So there are three levels of app that you can purchase or get for the DCS system. There's the free version, the standard version, and the premium version. So the free version basically just gets you the ability to run a train, forward, reverse, you know, ring the bell, do the whistle, and that's pretty much it. Uh, if you try to do other features, sound features and things like that, all the different settings, they're not available in the free app and you'll get a little pop up that tells you you've got to upgrade. So you have two upgrade choices. You've got the standard upgrade choice and you've got the premium upgrade choice. And the difference between the two is the standard will give you full functionality for all your engine DCS features. The premium one gives you additional functionality if you're using things like AIUs, accessory interface units, and switch controls, track switches. Like, so if you wanna control your entire layout, then you need the premium version if you have all that stuff set up on your layout for like uh, track switches, accessories, controls, all that stuff, right? The, the whole like kit and caboodle basically. But for most people, the standard one is gonna be completely sufficient for what you need for engines. So on my standard gauge layout, there are no accessories or tracks, switches that I'm controlling or anything like that. So I wouldn't need it up here. So I bought the standard version, which is just $4.99. The premium version is $24.99. And if you're not using any of those features, you're not gonna get anything else that's gonna uh, have to do with your engines. It's just for other pieces of your layout if you have the entire DCS system that controls everything. So just keep that in mind. <clears throat> the other thing is, unlike most apps that are on your tablet or um, phone that automatically update by themselves, this does not. So when there's an update to the app, and luckily there isn't too many, but when they do have one, you have to manually do it and you have to be careful the way you that you do it because it's a uh, it kind of tricks you for a second because you think you're going to the right area and if you're not careful you get charged again for the app and you and instead of getting just an upgrade for it so when you need to upgrade it you're going to go to this more menu which is at the uh bottom here it's right at the bottom here there's a more menu you click it, it has all these extra things on it like you can see user manuals newsletters shop mth videos catalog search news app settings and upgrade and then advanced features at the top so if you go to the upgrade choice it's gonna give you this screen right here this is the screen that you do not want to click so it talks about the upgrades are available for purchase to unlock the features you know you can't use a DCX Explorer for this you have to be a, a have a WIU TIU blah 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 shop and if you click shop it takes you out to the MTH website where then it has a link to download the app. That's not the way you wanna go, because if you do that, it doesn't know that you've already purchased it and it will charge you again. Ask me how I know, because it did. Because um, I had purchased this premium last year and then I tried it again and it, it actually charged me, uh, when I clicked the standard one, it actually charged me separately for the standard one. So what you wanna do is click the X here and then it'll show you your purchased products that you've purchased on the app store you can see I purchased a premium in February and then just the other day the standard right if for some reason you need to upgrade these you just you just do the restore button up here and then uh, it'll restore your apps right to whatever the latest version is and that that's how you do your little bit upgrade if you do it the other way by going off to the MTH website then it's gonna cause a problem right so 
basically what I'm saying is don't use the MTH website to get the, your app. You want to go to the app store and then this will keep track of everything that you purchased, right? So I really didn't need to purchase the standard one again. I just couldn't remember uh, the other day when I was doing it up here that I already had the premium one. And so then I clicked on standard and of course now it's a separate app. So I got charged for that one too, another five bucks. So just keep that in mind when you're doing your upgrades for your app. The other thing on the more menu here besides all the standard stuff that's pretty self-explanatory is advanced features which have the record playback function, import and export so you can import and export all your trains and everything, recover your engines and then system settings which basically will confirm that you're uh, set up with the uh, TIU. I got to turn it on. I don't have it on right now. But I will turn it on and then you'll see the TIU would be active there. This is also where you do the hide stop button if you want to, uh, excuse me, if you want to unhide the emergency stop button. Uh, to unhide it, you, you click this and then it's going to ask you to put in a password, which you have to do. Okay. And then once you enter a password, then it'll unhide the hide stop button. Same thing for the max engine speed lock. If you want to use that, you got to put a password in for it also. Okay, so that's under the system settings. Recover engines. When you find the TIU, it'll recover your engines if needed. Import export allows you to import or export your the whole file, right? So you have a backup of everything. And then of course the record playback allows you to record your session uh, and then play it back. And you can edit the names and all that kind of stuff. So if you're not familiar with that, it's all in the uh, DCS uh, guide. The app settings themselves are just for app support here. Uh, that's for service and repair, which really doesn't exist anymore. Uh, just some general info. And then what you're connected with. You're using the DCS WIU or you're using the DCS Explorer. It's one of the two. You can also reset the app here and it'll also tell you the version down here of the app itself. All right. And then the bottom here, you can see there's accessories. Right. This is again, if you have the premium version and you can activate, turn on and off accessories and things like that. Uh, same thing with your switches and track. Right. So uh, it has all those extra features if you're doing the premium, but you want the engine feature at the bottom here, which takes you to the engine menu. Right. And so it's pretty self-explanatory what it is right here. There's your bell. There's the whistle, which you just pull down. It's like a cord. Right. Uh, if you have the quillable whistle turned on, this will do the quillable so much easier than the remote. Um, and then you'll have your speedometer right here, right? And you can either just tap the plus sign to make it go up one at a time, or you can just drag it with your finger. Either or works on that. You have reverse and you've got forward. Now the difference here on the app that's really nice with the forward and reverse is when you hit forward, the train obviously is going to go forward. And when you want to stop the train, instead of like taking your speedometer back down, what you can do is just hit either forward or reverse again. It's like hitting the direction button on the remote and it'll it'll screech the train to a stop, right? It'll break it. If you if you push the same direction that you're going currently, then when you start it up again, it will go that same direction. You don't have to cycle it. On the remote when you hit the direction button, it cycles it to the reverse side, right? You're, you're going the opposite direction. So you have to actually hit it again to make it go forward still, if you wanted to. If you were just stopping it, you wanted to go forward. This is a little bit nicer because when you do the forward on here, then you just hit forward and it'll stop. And then when you start it up again, it'll keep going forward. If you do the opposite, you hit reverse to stop it then it will go in reverse when you start it up again. So it's kind of nice because it's you don't have to cycle through to get it uh, to go the other direction or cycle through to keep it the same direction. So I like that a lot on the app. Um, now, it also has these little down arrows that when you hit that has the other normal buttons that you're used to on the handheld remote. You got the, the front and the rear couplers, headlight on and off, smoke on and off, engine sounds on and off the labor and the drift up and down, the boost and the brake up and down, passenger freight announcements, the Doppler effect, and protocast, right? And then you also have the generic sound right here where you can adjust it with a slider.
And that's, you know, pretty much the main train menu. At the top here, you'll have three buttons basically that have the, uh, this button means you're on the train menu. This button right here is all the sounds that go with this particular engine. And then the gear are all the settings for this particular engine. And the engine's name is at the top here, as you can see. And you'll have the name editable very quickly if you wanted to. It'll have its address, which you can also edit on here. The engine type, and you can edit the engine soft key names if you want to by clicking this. And these are all the soft keys, okay, for this engine. So this is really nice. And one thing I like about this and that I don't like about the remote is that those soft keys are, first of all, you only get like five of them in the little screen and you have to hit the arrow to get to the next set of soft keys. This displays all soft keys at once. And you can name them exactly what they are and you don't have to use those little uh, sort of abbreviations that you can never remember on some of the soft keys. Like I've got some memorized on the remote, but there's others I can never remember what they are. Um, so this lets you edit the name and you can make it whatever you want. So you have all those custom sounds that are in each engine, like the departure sound, the um, arriving sounds, and all the other different sounds. You can label all of these sounds so you know exactly what each one is, so that when you're on the sound menu, you just hit it and you know what it is. There's no guessing at all. It's so, so much easier than the remote. Then you have all the sounds uh, down here. We can adjust the volumes for the individual sounds. You have the brake, proto chuff. You can do the chuff rate if you want to. And of course, there's clickety clack, the cab chatter, the Doppler menu, if you want to use the Doppler effect. So it has a couple of choices, right? You have all the different types of Doppler that you can choose from. And then the auto coupler slack, if you want it on or off. You have speed control, so you decide what the, the uh, speed control is going to be. You can set your max speed if you want to. You can lock your direction if you happen to need to do that. And then it has, of course, the acceleration and deceleration rates that you can adjust. So if you wanted to make it respond faster on acceleration or deceleration, you can change these values. Here's the smoke volume setting, which is low, medium, and high. But again, these are buried in the remote that you have to get to those when you're on the remote. Right? It's not just readily available that you just tap and it's right there. And then you can do a feature reset and an engine factory reset. So you have all those same choices that you do on the remote. Um, so again, if this was running, the engine's running and I hit the sound menu, all these could be labeled exactly the way I want them so I know exactly what they are and I just tap it and the sound plays and that's pretty much it. Okay. The other thing to remember is like you can change, because you can change the names, this is going to make it much easier for me on the standard gauge layouts. Because in standard gauge, the way the names are defaulted in here is not the way we would normally know them in standard gauge. So on the standard gauge world, we kind of know all the engines by the numbers. You know, 390, 408, 381, 400, uh, number 6, steam, right? It depends what it is. but. That's how you kind of know them by. So in the remote, I have a really hard time finding the engine I want quickly uh, using that thumb wheel trying to scroll through when the names are all these different names. Uh, so the nice thing about the app is, even though you can do the same thing in the remote, is in the app, this is so easy to change. Like I don't have to go through uh, buried menus to get to the area that I need to edit the engine. So for all my standard gauge, I'm going to relabel them with like 390E, for instance, on this one, and then a hyphen and then black brass or, you know, whatever it is. And that way I can quickly find like a 400 or whatever I'm looking for. And then I just look for which one it is based on the color or the road name or whatever it is. And it's going to be much easier to find in my train menu. That's as simple as that. Uh, so these edit things on the app just are very quick and easy. Like I said, you can edit the things on the remote, but it's not as easy because you have to go through these menus uh, to get to them and, and it's much harder to do. When you're doing it here, you're just gonna basically type in what you want on a keyboard at the bottom here, right? Exactly as you want it. And that's pretty much it. That's all you have to do and then you save it. So 
that's I really like the way that's so easy to do things inside the app basically is is what I'm saying when you want to change any of this stuff and you could change all this stuff on the fly very easily because you, you they haven't really laid out really nicely into these three main buckets right so the first two are running you're running things right you're running the engine you're uh, doing the sounds right you're turning on and off the lights you're doing all these other functions like what's the odometer what's the chronometer how's my track signal like all these things are on the main two menus here for functioning right but then you have the gear for changing things changing settings permanently on the engine whatever you want to do so i think it's laid out really nice and it's incredibly intuitive and very simple to use now if you want to switch engines, that's what this little drop down at the top here is for. So it'll show all your active engines in your list. It'll show inactive ones that are either on dead tracks or not on the track right now. And then of course you have the add engine choice right here. So if I did the add engine, it would give me a choice of adding an MTH or a TMCC legacy engine. <clears throat> and I can also build a lash up here if I want to build a lash up between engines. So you just follow those steps. It's pretty easy. And then um, you can see here, if I wanted to run all the engines at the same time, I have that same option, just like on the remote, where I can click that little check mark and all engines would be running no matter what I did right here with the uh, controls, right? So you have all those same exact choices that you do on the remote, except they're really easy to get to. Um, and then if for some reason <clears throat> you needed to, you know, edit this menu, you can, you can edit quickly delete ones out if they're no longer uh, applicable, depending what it is. You can also take them and reorder them. This is the best part because when they come up on your menu, you can have them in whatever alphabetical order you want and very easily move them around. I love it. It's so easy to use and it's gonna make controlling multiple engines simultaneously much easier. I have to be honest with you, when I'm using the remote and I'm trying to control like just two engines and I'm trying to switch between them, um, it's it's really clunky. When I'm here, basically, and I want to do that, I'm just going to basically hit this little drop down and switch between engines of whatever I'm trying to do. It, it makes it super easy. So um, I really like that uh, feature. This little button right here, this little circle, is a refresh. So that's like reading your engines on your track. So if you have some engines that uh, originally were on tracks that were um, inactive or they were not on the track anymore and you put them back on the track and you want to refresh it so it finds them and puts them in the active list, then you just use the little refresh here and it'll refresh it. You saw there, because I'm, I don't have any power right now, it's not connected to my TIU, so it, it gave me that little message, right? So, um, yeah, so pretty easy of how you can do everything inside here, whatever you're trying to do on your uh, layout. So you can see right now there's everything's in the inactive phase right now and not in the active phase. And so we'll uh, we'll uh, turn on the power here and we'll kind of show you how you can do some of this stuff. All right. So now that I got power on, I'm just going to hit the refresh button right here. So it reads everything that's on the tracks. Okay, now if I go back to my engine list right here, um, oh, nothing's active. Why isn't anything? Active? Oh, wait a minute, I gotta turn on the power to the tracks. Okay, so let me do the uh, just the outer track right here. So I'm gonna go now back to my uh, menu here and do a refresh. So I got two engines on the outer track right here right now. Okay, you see it found the uh, found both the engines, right? If I go to orange and blue, right, I can shut it down so that one's uh, not running. Switch to the 390, right? Hit the sh start up on that. I'm ready to go. So easy to use. And then if I hit the little plus sign here, the engine will start moving. I gotta move this out of the way here. One second. Oh, let's put it right there. There's the engine right there. Okay. 
So I'm just gonna use the uh, plus, just a tap, 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 right? And the thing will start moving. So easy to use, right? And it, you can drag it if you want to, right? Just to quickly do it. Now, if I hit forward, it stops. But if you look, when I come back here, right? And I start it up again, I don't have to cycle it. I'm just gonna hit plus again to give it a couple. And guess what? It's still in forward. If I hit the reverse, it'll stop. And then if I go, you know, plus, 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 or drag it, whichever you prefer, it's going backwards now. All right? Very easy. If I want to turn off the smoke because it's too much in the room, right? Hit the smoke, turn it off, and you can see, turned off the smoke. Same thing with the headlight, if I want to turn that off, turn it off and on, okay? Rear coupler, front coupler, okay? So all the stuff that you're used to is here, right on the, the uh, menu, very easy to get to. If I hit the sounds right here, because I have all the sounds and they're all labeled, all I know right, what they are. And I find this so much easier when I'm trying to do sounds. First of all, I don't have to go through a bunch of soft keys, and I can switch between controlling the engine, right, and actually go into the sounds back and forth in like literally like the blink of an eye, right? I got the train running, I want to do a sound, so I could do basically sounds. Hit, hit whatever sound I want to, and I'm ready to go. So I can customize all this to what they are. So I don't even know what sound one is, but if I hit it, it's some kind of a horn, uh, whistle, right? We got to run up the branch and back. So I could label this, we got to run up to branch and back, right? And then I would know exactly what it's going to say on each one of these, because I can customize. Just make sure we have enough steam. I don't want to double the hill today. Bent my elbow. Right? And on the soft keys, that would be really hard to know, because right, when they label the soft keys, they only label them like S01, S02, S03, things like that. You don't know what the sound actually is, and you can't really do much about that. The other thing is, they don't have all these sounds on the soft keys, right, by default. There's only like a couple sounds, one, two, and three, or whatever it is, right? And on the app, I can have every single sound that the engine can possibly uh, make and then custom label them, which is so nice. But the piece I really like about it the most is just being able to play a sound and go right back to the engine control. There's no menus, no soft keys. I don't have to go through a, the arrow button that takes me to the next soft key menu, all that kind of stuff. And I can switch between engines really quickly with the drop down and just switch to the other one and, you know, start it up. and do whatever I want to on that particular engine, right? Start up and shut down is really easy. All the buttons are laid out really nice. And believe it or not, this control right here is actually much, much better than the DCS thumb wheel. So the thing about the uh, control, I think that everybody always is, always like sort of says the uh, remote is better than the app is this speed control, which is actually not true in my opinion because this actually is more precise control here. Like by clicking the plus, I just get one at a time right here and it starts crawling. On the DCS handheld, I have to go like this with my thumb just to get it moving. And usually then it's going too fast because I've gone too far. And there's no, there's no fine control like you do in the app. Like with the app here, if I start hitting the just the plus sign, uh, it will start moving really slow. Like that's just two, I just tapped it twice and it's moving really slow. On the uh, thumb wheel, I'd be already too fast because I would have had to push it too far. So the control on here is actually better, believe it or not. It's really easy to get the train moving. And if you really want to get it up fast, right, you can just zip it up to wherever you want it, whatever it happens to be. So it's really easy to use. And 
and so, uh, and they have all the main stuff at the top part of the screen, but then the buttons that you don't use as much are on the bottom part right here for the main engine controls. But yeah, I, the layout of this and the way they've done it and the response that you get from this as opposed to the response for the remote is so much different and I really prefer the app. Now, this is on an iPad I'm using just for demonstration purposes, but I would probably just use my phone normally, just a little phone in my hand, which I can walk around and then very easily control everything quickly. And I think that's the big plus sign with the app is I can switch between things super quick and I don't have to go through a bunch of menus and buttons on the remote that I can't remember uh, what they are and how they're labeled. All right, so just as a quick comparison, let me show you some things on here. So I'm using the remote. I just powered on my track and I got two engines running and I want to shut them down. So the black brass one, as you can see right here, is the one in the menu right now. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna shut that down right here with the shutdown button. But then I want to shut down the other one, the 400E. It's the orange and blue one. So I gotta go back to engine. Now I gotta find it on the list here. And what I don't like about this is as I'm scrolling through the list, it's blinking because it's changing as I'm going through it. And I lose my, like, where I'm looking at on the screen, right? And I gotta find the orange and blue on this list, right? So it's really hard to find. I'm trying to find, see, there's an orange one, but that's not the right engine. That's the 3243. So I gotta, like, scroll until I get to the one I'm looking for. There it is right there. Then I have to select it, right? Then I've gotta actually do the shutdown. So that is multiple steps and it's a lot harder to find your engines than when I'm looking at the app and I get the entire list in front of me. Like all the engines are listed on the screen at the same time. I'm not scrolling through things. I don't, I'm not a big fan of scrolling. And this is really hard to read when you're scrolling through those and it's blinking every time you're clicking the scroll button as it's refreshing the screen. So that's the first thing I don't like about it when you're trying to either switch between engines or do different things. The second thing I don't like are these soft keys I was talking about here. So you only get four choices to start with and then you have to hit the fifth button to get the arrow so you go to the next soft key list, right? And they're all those three digit abbreviations, right? You can't have anything else besides that in there because it wouldn't fit on the screen and you gotta you know, go through multiple menus and then it, wraps around and starts at the beginning again. Now some of them like SRS, X, XS, I know what those are, right? But SO2, I can't even remember what it is. Is that the departure one? Is that the arriving one? Which one is that, right? And then if you were, let's say I want a departure and arrival right next to each other, I can't do that because I have to like find the other one wherever it is on the list. So the, these soft keys with these uh, three digit codes, right? Not a big fan at all. Much harder to trigger stuff. And as you can see, it doesn't have all 10 custom ones or 12, whatever I had on the menu there. Uh, it doesn't have those in the list here because it's mixing things like the sound menus and the lighting menu and everything else functions together in here, right? So you can customize these in the remote of what you see in here in the order. So don't get me wrong, you can do some customization but I can't change these, uh, you know, from three digits to a longer name, right? Because it wouldn't fit on the screen. So not a fan at all. The app is so, so much better. Not to mention everything is on a big single screen in the app. And, you know, I'm split across all over the remote here. I got this little section up here. I got soft keys here. Then I got engine buttons. And as I switch, unlike the app where I just, you know, selected off the window, I have to actually hit engine and then I have to hit uh, select, find it scrolling. Then I have to actually push this. Then I finally have control of the engine to do whatever I want, right? Now on the bottom here, we do have the same buttons as before, you know, start up, shut down, couplers, brakes, volume, smoke on and off, headlight on and off, that kind of stuff, that's fine. And the e-stop and everything, that's all the same thing. Reading if you want to refresh your engines from the inactive to active list. But up here, then, you have the bell whistle, and that's all the same. This is the piece that's different, right? You just have the direction button here. So when you hit that direction button, what will happen is the 
um, it won't work the same way as on the app. So just, just the, this is one of the things I really like about the app that I do not like about the remote. So let's demonstrate that one just because that's one of them that uh, um, I don't really like that much. So let's go over to the engine right here. Okay, I'm going to start her up on the remote. Sorry, I forgot I had the uh, the 400 in the menu here. So now I got to go to engine. Now I got to find that 390 again. Uh, let's see. Da -da. Ugh, this is such a pain. Okay, I found it. Now that I found it, I've got to push the button to select it. Now I've got it in the menu. Now I can start it up. All right, so I, I've gotten it started up here. Now, what we're going to do here, let me just back up a little bit. I'm just going to go forward first, right? And I'm going to use the thumb wheel. And i got to turn it a couple notches to get it to going. And I'm going to hit the direction button. Okay, it stopped. But if I start up again using the thumb wheel, right? got to push it up a bunch of times. Now I'm going the opposite direction. It's not staying in forward. If I hit direction again, it stops and it's going to go forward now. If I want to stay in reverse, I actually have to hit it again so it switches. Now when I do it and I turn the thumb wheel, it goes in reverse. And you notice I got to turn the thumb wheel pretty uh, a lot to get it to go. Like it's it's not like the uh, the app. So just those couple of things, the thumb wheel, the direction button, the uh, soft key menu at the top here, and not being able to see all my choices simultaneously, like for the um, sounds, just having a nice list where I can just hit multiple sounds right after each other. Um, the remote is just not as smooth. Um, does it work? Of course it works. The remote works, right? Uh, but I can do the same exact thing holding my phone in my hand and walking around the room. Now to say, you know, I know one of the big things is, uh, you know, guys are like, oh, you have to take your eyes off, you have to look at their, uh, you have to take your eyes off the engine while it's running to look at the screen. Well, n on some things you do, yes. And if you're using the remote, you can use the thumb wheel to slow it up and down, right? And hit the direction button because you're probably used to where that thing is, right? But you can't do anything else without looking at this. You can't use the soft keys to trigger any kind of sounds without looking at the menu, and all the and then trying to remember what all the little three-digit codes mean. So you still have to look at the remote for that. I guarantee you, if you're going down here on the bottom for any of these buttons, you have to look at the remote. You're not going to remember exactly where your thumb is. So there's you still have to look at the physical remote. It's just that there's a couple things like the thumb wheel direction. Uh, that you, you know, you kind of naturally know where they are and you don't have to look down. But like I said, on the app, it's just, it's a split second and everything is so instantaneous that I don't think you're going to find a big difference. I don't. I know where, uh, when I'm using the, the, uh, my phone in my hand, it's, I, I don't even see the difference. All right. So like, you know, you can rename your engines. You see, I just renamed this one right here. But basically, when you go into the settings menu, you can do an edit on your engine name and, you know, name it whatever you want. So, uh, but I did notice that there, you can see right here, is 16 characters as a maximum when they put right in the window right here. So you might have to cre get creative with some of your names. And this is not, I don't think, an app uh, restriction. I think it's a, the DCS system, the remote restriction right um so that's that's why they have this unfortunately i hope hopefully in the new uh wiu that they come out with uh or whatever it's called wtiu uh the combination one uh they'll expand this so that you can have more than 16 characters that would be really good but i believe because of the remote itself right here it's that's why it has this limit in here because it's just you know still using the same uh, system and everything but regardless uh, again you can name this anything you want so if I wanted to call this the 390 um, E and then you know black whatever it is okay so I know which one it is and that's all you have to do and then on your menu right it'll be there in your uh, list and then uh, here on your menu, 
if you want to to for your active engine list and everything if you want to find them really easily you can do an edit up here and just move them around and sort them the way you want to so if you come to the active engine list then you'll know which one is which very easily by just going alphabetically down the screen so it's got a nice feature with that too which I really like so um, yeah and that's all you need to do you can do the same thing uh, when you get to the uh, the you know if you want to change these custom sounds you're gonna have to play them all <laughs> so you know which one is which first but once you get the sounds right you know which ones are which then um, you know you can obviously go in and then change your your sound menu there's an engine soft key name uh, button right here then it lets you change all these soft key names that are in there for this particular engine I actually have 10 sounds which don't even show up on the remote itself right to choose from on here and um, you just basically if you want to do these you just hit one you can rename them now this particular one if I type a whole bunch doesn't have a 16 character limit this will just kind of keep going I don't even know what it goes to but you should have plenty of room to put in whatever your custom sound name is in here and then save it so um, that's really nice too so then you'll be able to have all your sounds uh, labeled and uh, ready to go and that's the piece I think I'd like one the, the most on the app because I have all these sounds and these engines and I never get to play them because of these encrypted these little cryptic like codes up here for the soft keys and sometimes I don't I know the S's are the sounds right but I don't remember what they all are and some of them like the train wreck one if you hit it accidentally then it kills the train right it stops and does the train wreck uh, sequence and stuff like that so it's nice that you can easily just see these and again I can't stress this enough I'm switching back and forth between these things in a split second to do anything right the trains running hit that hit a sound sequence or a crossing signal, hit that, I'm back at the train controlling it again. So super, super easy. All right, guys, well, that's gonna be it for today's video on the MTH DCS Wi-Fi system setup and control of your trains. Personally, I like it better for control of the DCS engines than the handheld remote. I think the handheld remote is just a little bit clunky not as easy to use and the app is super fast and I can control my trains much better personally for me so whether you use a, a tablet or a, just an iPhone or Android phone whatever you're using in your hand to control it I just I still think it's easier than the handheld remote and of course as we know the new unit that's coming out from MTH that's going to incorporate the Wi-Fi module inside the TIU is not going to be uh, compatible with an RF remote anymore. You have to have a tethered cable, so that kind of defeats the purpose of a remote anyway. So um, for people that are just getting into DCS and to get that new unit, they're probably going to be using the app anyway. So if you haven't given it a try, give it a try. What's the worst that could happen? You don't like it. Uh, you can use the, uh, it's only $4.99 for the standard version, which gives you the full DCS features. And you can give it a try, see if you like it. Um, but um, me personally, I prefer it over the handheld remote. So now as far as the Lionel side of the house, that's another video for another day because we don't know yet what the final Cab 3 app is going to look like that goes with the new Base 3. And if it's going to be as nice and easy to use as MTH's design or if it's going to be clunky. So we'll find out when that actually comes out. But again, that's the way all the manufacturers are moving towards using uh, apps because they're easily updatable and changeable and you don't have to rely on a piece of hardware anymore with the handheld remote. So, all right, so that's going to be it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure you subscribe, hit that like button, hit the bell for notifications. And as always, I will see you guys next time. Peace, guys.